Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on YouTube? It's Filthy and we're back with another video. Today we're taking a look at the new reworked followers uh, for patch 2.7. So this is the PTR. Uh, it's going to get switched off in a little bit. This is probably one of the last videos I'll get the chance to record today. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go through the emanation system. We're going to talk about some options, uh, how I would set the followers up in the season. Uh, and just, yeah, a guide on it really, I guess, for casual solo play. Um, before we do jump in, thumbs up obviously always brightens my day. Uh, and as always, you know, we've got more videos coming. So if you enjoyed Diablo 3, do consider subscribing. Um, now, this follower change is probably one of the best things to happen to this game in a long, long time. Uh, followers now can have 13 item slots and their relic, which is great. The skills have been revamped and all the followers now have got their place. They are useful. Uh, I don't know if you're anything like me. I've pretty much just used the Templar. That's been the only thing I've kind of really used for, I mean, like what, 95% of the time. Occasionally I would use the Enchantress if I had uh, an attack speed breakpoint that I needed to get. Um, but again, with 90% with of my time in this game, in the thousands and thousands of hours I've played, has been solo, uh, solo casual. And yeah, it's just been Templar the whole way. So it is it is kind of cool to have Scoundrel uh, and and also um, Enchantress, which, which I'm going to be using an awful lot more now. What I would say, I think the most important thing about deciding what to do with your followers, um, the, the number one point, I think, is to decide whether you need cooldown or not. Um, because if you do need cooldown, then this skill here, uh, Prophetic Harmony, is is obviously fantastic. Uh, we don't need cooldown on this build that I've got at the moment on, which is Mage's T16. But if you do need it, uh, you can tap this out at 10,000. Now, I've deliberately left uh, that out just so that we can see how this changes. So that you see it's 9.98%. This is a max of 10, and that's because your main stat needs to get to 25k. Uh, so that is now capped at 10% uh, and it's like that for all of them, they're on, they're on sliding scales uh, and obviously the more mains that you get the better. So as you build your follower over time, uh, they will get stronger. Now, realistically 25k is going to be a little hard uh, initially in the season to hit. You're going to need some ancient items, you're going to need uh, some gems. But the good news is obviously you get, get the benefits on a slider. Uh, which is pretty nice now looking at the skills are uh, for the first one uh, we've got charm normally speaking you won't equip one of these um because you don't want the cc of the slow or the charm you know you might want to control your own crowd control effect uh, and as they both do cc we can't currently unlearn skills uh, hopefully that will come in the future uh, we've got static elemental bonus for 10%, so that's extra damage. Uh, so in this case, we'd be getting some extra physical. So again, you know, Stone of Jordan is a nice item to pair with this because it just allows you to pick the same element across, uh, you know, your maybe your Blackthorns, maybe your Braces, maybe your Amulet. Uh, but as I say, if you need cooldown at all, I would be picking this one and I'd be putting this on my most important build. So let's say I've got a GR speed or GR push build. Cooldown is important to me. Uh, I'm probably going to assign that role to the Enchantress um, and I would set her up on a GR spec uh, rather than say this, which is a T16 one. Um, the last two skills we have got powered shield, so we get like toughness basically, increased armor, um, you know, and, and reduction from melee attackers. And then we've also got increased damage, but uh, you know, puts down a pool, 10% increased damage. So again, straight up toughness or damage choice here. Uh, and then cheat death, all the followers get it, which is obviously great. Um, and it allows us to maybe take an extra passive, which is nice. You can just simply play with double cheat death, which is great for hardcore. Um, and then we also get some extra attack speed. So again, if you had a, a build that needed the attack speed for break points, you would probably take focus mind. Uh, but otherwise, fate's lap seems to be uh, the way to go. Now, in terms of what emanates there is a list i will link the blog post um but it's really easy to tell it just has brackets emanates and this light blue text so we can see here that the uh, cane set emanates so we get extra keys so this is like a t16 kind of spec now for t16 and bounty what i probably would do is i would have uh, one follow set up for t16 i would have another setup for bounty because uh, i would run them slightly differently and then one more for gr uh, like push and speed now it may well be that on the season 
I decide to do T16 and Bounty on one, you know, a GR spec on one and then a GR spec on another. Because don't forget one of the other changes we've got this season is the leaderboard filter. So, you know, if we've got a Necro and let's say we want to do Trigul's Avatar, well, we may want cooldown to push that uh, or play that on speeds. We might also be playing Mages uh, and we might not want cooldown. I mean, obviously you normally would on Mages, but you get the idea as in what, what would be a bit of a pain, I guess, would be to be constantly coming in here and having to rejig everything each rift. So I think probably the best decision is to, largely speaking, decide which one you want for t16 do you want to use that for bounties yes or no and then it, if you you know if you want two separate specs for that you then have one gr setup um now t16 is by far the greater impact here so bounties uh, and key farming are definitely the two main areas the followers it, it can really really help with and this is because we can now take sages so we can get double dbs Early on in the season, very important. Uh, sages can be, it can be a helm, it can be boots, uh, and then canes, you know, obviously you're gonna take canes pants, but then again, it could be gloves, it could be hat, uh, it could be boots. You know, they're, they're the two main things. Now for bounties, obviously you don't get any keys, so canes can certainly come off, and you would probably want gloves of worship, uh, because gloves of worship will work with shrines, so we get a 10 minute uh, shrine effect, which would be pretty good, and, Early on in the season, we'll probably take Broken Crown because we want gems for augments. But again, if you decide you don't want that, uh, Gloves of Worship can go on. Now, the Enchantress is kind of unique because she will do two-handers. So she can actually take this Spear of Lysander and she can use that. And what that'll do is whenever you kill a demon, because it does work on, on assist, whenever we kill a demon, we get a random shrine effect. Uh, and obviously if we have the Gloves of Worship on, then it will last for 10 minutes, uh, which obviously would be would be pretty pog. So that is certainly something to consider. Uh, shoulder slot, homing pads, I think are gonna be pretty dominant. Um, for T16 and Bounty, it's brilliant because it means your teleport can't be interrupted, which is which is really nice. The only real other one uh, is gonna be the Spoldras of Sakara, meaning you'd have to repair your items. Um, I'm not massively big on these. Uh, I probably wouldn't be bothered too much. I probably would just kit all mine out with homing pads. Um, just that I can swap them from T16 to GR to whatever. But, you know, if you definitely only going to keep one follower for GR, I would go for these because uh, it is going to be better than teleport. Now, if you're doing hardcore, you might want to leave homing pads on because the damage reduction and the non interruption of your teleport could save your life if you're proc. Um, but if you're doing softcore, yeah, maybe these. Uh, now, Rogue doesn't emanate, but obviously you're going to want one on your follower if you're going to do multiple sets. Uh, and as I say, at the moment, the only things we've got are Sages uh, and Canes. Cooldown doesn't really stack on the followers. We can't reduce these cooldowns by giving cooldowns to the characters. The only one, I think, is the Templar's Heal. Um, but again, you could set your Templar up with, with Crimsons. Uh, so Rogue, again, would be handy for that. Uh, Avarice Band does emanate, this is brilliant for T16 because it opens up other slots like Stone of Jordan, like um, Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac, the, you know, the, there's lots of things that we can do uh, and Flavor of Time again is phenomenal. GR Speed and, and Torments only, you know, you don't get pylons in bounties so again, you know, in theory for a bounty one, you might want to take this off uh, for something else. Now, the other necklace items I don't think are terribly inspiring because we've got the uh, Devu energy trap, so we get extra stun duration. That could be useful for something like a necromancer if you're looking to do Crispin's procs because you your stuns last longer. And the other one is the Glass of Life, uh, which I think begins with R. Where are we? Yeah, Rakoff's Glass of Life. So, 4% chance to drop Health Globes. I mean, it's kind of useful. You know, Health Globes will help you uh, keep you alive. So, you know, um, it's nowhere near as useful as the flavor of time. Um, but again, Necromancer, possibly, if you were, if you were looking to pair it, the, it with Reaper's Wraps, um, you know, in the armor slot, which would give you resource, depending on picking up Globes. It does. It is capped on two seconds, but... It's something you could do, but again, I probably will just simply leave Flavor of Time on all of my followers. Again, just for convenience. 
now there are some powers that don't animate no, uh, emanate now obviously we've always used the unity with the unvulnerability token to get 50 percent damage reduction and we've always used the oculus again working on a similar principle as the spear whenever the the follower assists uh, like playing a support build basically you spawn oculus uh, so obviously for grs you're definitely going to want the oculus in rather than avarice band um, but on a similar sort of thing we can also kind of almost emanate from the back door with like the sultan blinding sword so this has got a very high chance to blind on hit up to 40 percent same principle for blind faith again it goes up to 40 percent uh, so if you have something that benefits from blind so like shotgun crusader again necromancer for crispins that sort of stuff um that could be of benefit and again corn of the shirt uh, corn of the shirt uh, cord of the shermer um doesn't emanate but again they will set off the um chaos field because it's just a chance on hit so any on hit effect uh i think the follower can benefit from so there may well be some more these are the main ones that i've kind of played about with um but in all honesty the main area is going to be t16 and this is going to be kind of where it is now uh gold skin is one that emanates it again it's not something imperative to get on the character and you'll know i've got it on mine because the secondary property here 100 gold 100 uh, extra gold for monsters doesn't emanate it's just the chance uh, for them to drop gold when you hit them so again a little bit lackluster now i do think blizz will expand this emanation list as we go uh you know gold wrap would be a biggie uh just to compete here with sages i think uh, and again that would open up a bit of variety in the belt slot for t16s because you know, I've done lots of T16 guides and they invariably always have gold wrap at the hero or in the cube. Um, you know, some more jewelry items would be nice. Maybe, maybe some weapons. We don't really want multipliers, um, but it is it is quite interesting. Uh, looking very quickly at the Templar skills, uh, obviously, you know, we've, we this is the guy we've always used. You know, I normally do heal. I normally do uh, life regen and loyalty. I normally do charge. Um, and then which obviously does have the stun on it but again you know you can pick on slots it depends whether you want to uh, want the cc uh, and then inspire uh, i probably would still take a lot of the time the resource generation again it depends if you've got a resource thirsty build it's more important uh, but again cheat death is kind of nice uh, and it will again free up passives for you uh, so i'd say i'd say the temple is probably the more defensive option um, you know, it's got the heal, it's got the life per second, it's got the regen, um, you know, so that's kind of been the guy who we have used, maybe a little bit vanilla, maybe a little boring, uh, I'm certainly looking forward to playing with the scoundrel a lot more next season, again, he's probably a bit more uh, DPS, so we've got slow enemies, again, maybe you want that, maybe you don't, uh, we've then got chance to stun, so again, this is maybe one you want to leave off the first skill because you don't want the CC, uh, unless they do update it so we can unlearn skills, which would be brilliant if we could get that done. Uh, we have uh, increased all damage done, which is great. Uh, again, increased crit chance. Obviously, these would go up. He's got he's got no main stat at the moment. Uh, Dex, obviously, these would go up quite a lot when we fully kitted him out. Uh, we've then got increased damage done again. Um, so obviously, you can see the kind of pattern here. Um, you know, it, it's basically more damage. And then we've got cheat death again on vanish and then this extra kind of like um you know cloud with the guaranteed crits it lasts you know for a period of seconds and again as you get its decks up to 25k uh, it does last so importantly on the templar uh, you need strength so obviously you need like 25k strength now one thought you might have is well i've got a scoundrel on int i've got a templar on decks and i've got an enchantress um you know how am i going to get all these items with all the correct main stat you know if i just play necro then i'm going to have enchantress so i mean you could just you could just stick to one follower um, but bear in mind when you do get something like this uh, you only need to reroll the main stat so you could simply just pop this in your stash like this leave make a new character so a barb it doesn't even have to be you don't have to level it just take it to 70 and then when you come over here to the mystic uh, you will then be able to re-roll, um, I mean, we've already re-rolled that for sockets, but you'll be able to click the intelligence and re-roll it for strength. But at the moment, obviously, as an intelligence-based character, uh, we can't really gear our followers up with the correct main stat. So you're either going to have to group or 
and get people to drop your stuff you know and trade or if you're just doing solo which obviously this is a main solo change as i say you'll just need another character uh, to re-roll so it probably means having at least three character slots to do the season um but I, that's the fastest way around that uh, because otherwise if you want to gear up a templar and you're playing an intelligence class that's going to take a while because uh, obviously you're just not going to get the right main stat but all in all i think the system is fantastic i'm really happy with it uh it's made farming keys on ptr very easy i love the flexibility um it's it's possibly it's made a lot more set builds feel like legacy of dreams to be honest because obviously with these options in here um you know particularly avarice band uh, it has been it has been very nice and flavor of time is a really good one nems you know we've got these three slots that you know 90 percent plus of t16 builds have got this this and this so it does allow for some extra options which which is great you know flexibility uh, is a lovely thing so hopefully blizzard will expand this as we go hopefully we will get more emanation powers we might get some more at launch they might add a couple of extra slots hopefully uh, but if not, I think over time uh, we will look to grow. And another important point to this is this is a way of adding cube powers via the back door for season themes. So we could easily end up with, say, a season where the follower will emanate convention of elements. And that way it only works on solo, won't work on groups. So if you want to do four player groups, all four of you aren't going to benefit from the COE, which obviously would be very OP potentially. Uh, and it would just do so solo and that's just an example off the top of my head but it does give us um some interesting things um you never know maybe the follower will get a cube one day so there's there's plenty to do but all in all brilliant addition to the game i'm really happy uh hopefully you have enjoyed uh, this little guide i think we've covered everything that we want to uh, again maybe at some point we'll get an expansion to this where the cannot die will be incorporated into the follower we can have a bit more fun with this relic here. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I can't think that there's much else that I wanted to cover. Any questions, stick them in the comments. Come by the stream. Um, yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun powering all these people up over the course of the season. Can't wait for season 23. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take it easy. Peace.